So good evening to this rearranged fixture between Plymouth Argyle and Stockport County. My name's Richard Hoskin. Just as Manchester United manager Alex Ferguson has just caused to ask for an extension to the Premiership campaign, Stockport manager Dave Jones would be fully justified in asking for an extension for County's end of season. Because of their fine run in both the FA Cup, where they reached the fourth round, and the Coca-Cola Cup, where Stockport made the semi-finals, this is remarkably County's 59th match of the season. Stockport now face an exhausting end of season as they play their rearranged fixtures. At least all those matches haven't been played in vain, Stockport are currently fourth in the second division table with up to three games in hand. So Stockport, who recovered from a poor start to the season, still have a fantastic opportunity of making automatic promotion. Argyll, on the other hand, are still threatened by relegation, just four points away from the danger zone, so a win is obviously vital for the Pilgrims. If they are to win, Argyll will have to change the form book. Plymouth have just won three league games at home since November, and Argyll's last four league games at home park have produced just the one goal. And even then, that was a penalty against Rotherham United. Paul Williams, Martin Barlow and Neil Illman have all passed fitness tests and take their places in the side. Illman at the expense of Adrian Littlejohn, who's relegated to the substitutes bench. Bruce Gobolo and Carlo Corrison also return to the side. The pair missed the game versus Preston because of international duty. Our goal line up as follows. Number one, Bruce Gobolo. Two, Chris Billy. Three, Paul Williams. Four, Mark Saunders. 5 Mick Heathcote, 6 Mark Patterson, 7 Carlo Corrison, 8 Jason Robottom, 9 Neil Illman, 10 Simon Collins and 11 Martin Barlow. And the subs are Ronnie Morget, Adrian Littlejohn and Tony James. For Stockport County, David Orr. For Stockport rather, sorry, and the duo Tim Bennett and Chris Marsden are both suspended and miss out this evening. Whilst Matt Brown and Brett Angel are ruled out through injury, that will be a blow for them. Stockport line up then with Paul Jones in goal, two Sean Connolly, three Lee Todd, four Tony Dinning, five Mike Flynn, six Jim Gannon, seven Lewis Cavaco, eight the experienced Gordon Cowens, nine Ken Charlie, ten Alan Armstrong and eleven Kevin Cooper. And the substitutes are the experienced Andy Much, Damon Searle and Kieran Durkin. David Orr's the referee, he's a civil engineer from Ivor in Buckinghamshire. The referee's assistants are Mr Cockwell from Barnstable and Mr Pike from Gillingham. And the fourth official, should it be needed, is the Mr M Hawks. So this fixture between Plymouth and Stockport was originally pencilled in for the beginning of the year, in January, but because of the commitments in the FA Cup, we're now taking place on 8th of April. Argyle will kick off his second division fixture. Attacking from right to left as we look. And Carlo Corazon and Mark Saunders, the goal scoring here, are up at Preston on Saturday. Standing over the ball, ready to get play underway. So David Orr gets proceedings underway. Stockport are Evans favourites to win this evening's game. Argyle, you can get odds of 2 to 1 and a draw 5 to 2. So Stockport, who are going now for that final push for promotion. Not surprisingly, favourites to win this afternoon's game. That's Ken Charlery earning side a early free kick, 20 seconds into this game. And Sean Connolly takes it rather quickly. Number 10, Alan Armstrong. His cross though is poor. Armstrong, whose hair seems to change colour more times than he changes his socks. Signed from Newcastle United for £35,000 in July 1994 and has been a hit ever since. Number eight there is Gordon Cowens. Armstrong was jumping, but Heathcote has an easier time of things. But Armstrong gets a second opportunity. It's the visitors who've started off the brightest. Ken Charlery with a header. And Bruce Cobbler forced to make his first save. A simple one at that. 
Well, the referee showing he's not going to be lenient this evening when it comes to pushing. That's Carlo Corazon earning a free kick. Barlow takes it very quickly. A fine ball to Paul Williams. Paul Williams trying to beat his man. In the end, Sean Connolly gives away a corner kick. Well, Argos form away from home has been rather good this of late. But at home, it's been a different story. Goals have been the problem. And perhaps they might get one now to turn things around. Martin Barlow will take this corner kick. The first of the game. There's plenty of bodies to aim at. And then they play it short to Carlo Corazon. Ilman, first time ball, and it's poor at that. Well, Neil Ilman keeps his place in the side. Came in for Carlo Corazon on Saturday. You expected him to make way for, for Corazon today. But no, Littlejohn's been dropped instead. Neil Ilman, of course, has five goals this season. His latest goal coming at Shrewsbury when he got the winner four minutes from time. The header there from Cavico. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. And that's Sean Connolly, one of the heroes of the Coca-Cola Cup run. club captain, the inspirational Mike Flynn with this throw in. It's up to Heathcote to deal with it. He was fouled by Charlery. Ken Charlery making his fourth appearance of the season at home park. He's played three times here for Peterborough United, twice in the league and once in the FA Cup. So he's no stranger to the Argo defence. That's Collins there, playing in midfield today. And the foot up there by Mick Heathcote, and the referee, no option but to give a free kick there. Although Heathcote's the player who stays down. David Orr putting a comforting arm around the Argyle captain there. And it takes a lot to get Heathcote down, he's on his feet again. One of the bravest players you're most likely to see. So two number 10s, Armstrong and Collins. Armstrong wins the battle, a burst into the penalty area. In the end, it's in vain. And it goes harmlessly wide of the goal for a goal kick to Plymouth. Armstrong turns well. Charlery with a flick. Well, we played five minutes and Stockport, it's fair to say, have settled the quicker out of the two sides. A couple of breaks, which would have worried Bruce Cobble. Oh, well, fully extended him. Here's Charlery. Heathcote accused of fouling the uh, Peterborough number nine. It's a free kick. So pushing forward amongst others is Jim Gannon. The captain Flynn's also in there. In the end, it needs a header from Williams, and it's still not away until Mark Patterson. Heads it away for safety, and Stockport to have their first corner of the game in the sixth minute. So the corner swung in. That's Collins with a header. Ilman trying to chase it. It's another great cross. Kevin Cooper providing the ammunition. Grubbler, though, with the shield, preventing any further danger.
Well, of late, Argyle have been well publicised for their lack of striking talent since the departure of Mickey Evans. Stockport, on the other hand, have a few strikers with a bit of pedigree. Ken Charler is no slouch. Alan Armstrong's earned rave reviews all season, and they've got Andy Much on the bench, as well as the injured Brett Angel, who's had experience with Everton, amongst others. So plenty of goal-scoring talent available to Stockport this season. Here's Collins, who's been made to play up front for Argyle. With a fine ball forward to Neil Illman, the Argyle number nine. Illman twisting and turning in the end. It's a goal kick. Paul Jones in goal, 29 years of age. Well, Corazon was chasing there, but in vain. Robottom has been outstanding of late. Not so outstanding there, is he? Heathcote's having to deal now with his error. Corazon picks it on. Well, there's been plenty of stoppages in this game because of the referee's whistle. He's blowing up for anything at the moment. Robotten then, takes the free kick, Heathcote's up there causing some problems, but he couldn't use his considerable height to get on the end of that, and Stockport have a goal kick. Signed from Wolves, Paul Jones, and has made that number one spot his own, beating off the competition of the likes of Neil Edwards and Richard Williams. another corner kick Kevin Cooper again will take it it's an excellent corner and the header there from Jim Gannon really should have gone into the back of the net it was a free header the Argo defending had a lot to be desired for and that should at least have forced a save from Bruce Grobelar. The best effort of the game, nine minutes into this second division fixture. Excellent corner kick. I won't want to concede too many of them in this game. That's the quality they're expecting. One supporter just having a quick joke that that was a shot on target, but that's about the only consolation you can get from Robotten's rash clearance. Connolly there, heads the ball to Cooper. Bit of a mix up there. Arkell get a throw in. Here's Martin Barlow. Searching for the run of Neil Illman. The offside flags up, it was late. But a good run from Illman, picked out by Barlow, but the offside flag thwarting Argyle's efforts. a good ball. It's a throw into Stockport. Lee Todd will take it. Charlery trying to make a run for his teammate. Heathcote though beats Charlery to the ball. Illman. Illman showing some strength. Wins a throw in. Billy has been earning a lot of praise from Mick Jones of late. Jones saying that if Billy keeps up his standard performances, then he's going to be worth quite a bit of money for the Pilgrims. Certainly in being impressive this season in his new birth fullback. Williams making a lot of effort to get to the ball, but he was just beaten by Sean Connolly.
Barlow. Cowens, who's lost a bit of hair since his heyday. Stockport just stroking the ball out of defence. The long ball forward now towards Ken Charlery. Bit of a mix-up there with Heathcote. Heathcote's looking a bit worse for wear at the moment. Soldiers on. Here's Connolly. Patterson got to the ball first, but Kevin Cooper now can run at the Argyle defence. Patterson now can get a second bite at the cherry. Saunders scored a spectacular goal up at Preston on Saturday. Beautiful effort. The game, especially from Argyle's point of view, yet to get going yet. Stockport, I think, will be happy with the proceedings. 12 and a half minutes into the game. Corazon. Billy now showing a turn of pace. Billy, this is an outstanding run. The ball to Ilman's not bad either. Ilman, the return ball back to Billy, but it's not very good. And all Argo gets a throw and perhaps they deserve a lot more. Especially the outstanding run out from the fence by Chris Billy. That's just made things a little bit better for Argyle. The crowd out of their seats for a change. And now out of their seats in frustration. It's another offside. Charlery. Well, there's nobody out there from Heathcote's clearance to take advantage. Simple for Flynn just to tidy things up and get another attack ro rolling. Williams. At the moment, Ilman's the only man forward. A lone striker. Paul Jones was very calm there. Billy being urged to not give up the fight. And in the end, fights the white road because it's a free kick. Billy with a foul. Taken quickly. This is Cavaco. The cross is good. Robotter misses it. Well, has that gone in? Unbelievable. Alan Armstrong with a header. Bruce Gobelar can afford a smile as well, he might, because. Everyone in the crowd thought that was the opening goal of the game. The woodwork saves Argo. I don't know if Grobolo got a touch as well. But outstanding cross there by Cavaco. Alan Armstrong with a bullet header. That really should have been the first goal of the evening. Unbelievable there. And still the crowd discussing that extraordinary moment. Stop all that. Have to be professional and just get on with things. Gannon with the ball. Well, Alan Armstrong scored on his debut and hasn't really stopped scoring since. Was the club's top goal scorer last season and he almost added another one to his tally then. Williams saved by the referee's whistle. Frustration is the order of the day at the moment. Argyle being made to take the ball, take the free kick at exactly the right spot. I sometimes think some of the Argyle fans are here just to have a good moan at the referee. They're certainly getting the money's worth at the moment. Elman keeps that in play. Corazon prevents the back pass. But it's Stockport who are well in control at the moment. Armstrong, Sean Connolly, 
It's a great run by County's fullback. That was a cross come shot. Argyle desperately trying to get it away. I thought Collins was going to break then, but there was too much pace on the ball. Here is Collins now. It's two against two. Corazon. It's got Collins for support on his right. Corazon then might go alone. In the end, it was a waste. Such a frustrating moment. Corazon trying to feed the ball to his teammate, Simon Collins. And a promising Argyle break counts for nothing. That coming after 17 minutes. Plymouth Neil, Stockport Neil. But for now, it's Stockport well in control. Ilman. Ilman, it's an outstanding run. In the end, he was fizzled out by Tony Dinney. Just before he was about to get his shot on goal. Argyle just looking a bit more lively in this past minute. That will give Nick Jones some encouragement. Well played, Robotton. Armstrong. This is Luis Cavallo. The tackle by Row Bottom. And a few oohs and ahs from the Argyle faithful. They knew it was a free kick. And when Stockport do place this ball down, it's, a, it's going to be a dangerous position for Argyle to deal with here. Cowens, who's always been a dead ball specialist, scored many a free kick for clubs such as Blackburn and Aston Villa. And indeed, there's no surprise that Cowens takes it, searching for his teammate in some space. Gray block there. Williams with the block. Tony Dinning with a final shot that went over. Well, we've only played 90 minutes, but you just get starting to get the feeling whether Stockport are going to have one of those days. Having many a pop at the Argyle goal without having any of the luck. You just wonder whether Argyle are going to just have the one chance and take it. Early doors yet, though. The ball's gone a well. Texting the Senate to get to the other side of the pitch, and now Billy will take a throw in for Plymouth. Charlery, furthest forward. Not sure if he intended to find Connolly, but that's what happened. Corazon with a ball to Neil Illman. Illman, Collins! Well, Collins is yet to score for Argyle, and I don't think he's had a better chance of doing so then. Just a fine save from Paul Jones, his first save of the game. And Argyle had their second corner of the game. <laughs> Neil Illman. Confident catch by the keeper, Paul Jones, making a good save there from Collins. Collins, who had his... Argyle's best chance in the last home game against Watford was through again then, after some good work by Ilman. Ilman's made some pretty good runs from midfield and running into attack. And that'll give Argyle some encouragement. Well, Argyle battling just too much then, free kick. Mike Flynn. Virtual ever present in the side, takes the free kick. Heathcote, another pretty regular 
man in the Argyle team. Grobola struggling. Charlery got on the end of it, but his shot was pretty tame on the end. Grobola with a fumble. You usually get one of those per game. But he gets away with it. Williams with the header. And this is now a good run by Cavaco. Dinning. Lee Todd is the number three. It's a cracker goal. Never going to trouble Bruce Grobbler. This attack might trouble Stockport now. It's Collins. Collins, I think, trying to find Corazon, but the pass didn't come out. Rowbottom. Spreading it out wide very nicely indeed. Instant space. Chris, Chris Billy. Billy running at the defence. His cross takes the deflection, headed away by Cowens. Cooper completes the job. Good foot in there by Festival Patterson and then Barlow. Good ball by Robottom. Another good pass. Corazon to Neil Ilman. Neil Ilman. Ilman. Barlow almost got a track at goal. Saunders. Chris Billy completely unmarked on the right hand side. Bit of pressure from Argyle. Billy going for goal. Way over in the end. Well, Chris Billy scored two goals in Argyle's last victory in the league up at Shrewsbury Town. Scored four goals in all. And it's been pushing forward to good effect in this last five minutes. <laughs> Barlow giving away a free kick. Here's Ken Charlery. Charlery, he gets around Robottom. Can he get around Heathcote? In the end, it's another free kick. The referee's going to frustrate someone if he's not careful. Robottom. Can he find Ilman? He can. That's another good pass. That looked like a corner to me. It is. It's a cue for Mick Heathcote to come forward. Patterson also entering the penalty area. Had a good shot saved on Saturday against Preston. Wonder if he can be a bit lucky this evening. Ilman. Again, Jones comes out. This time he flaps and Heathcote! Oh, what's the referee done here? It's only a throw in in the end. How on earth didn't that go in? I thought it across the line. The header from Mick Heathcote. Desperately close to a... Opening goal there, Plymouth Argyle. It must have been cleared off the line. All Argyle got in the end was a throw in. An amazing event there. Both sides gone so close to scoring the goal. First of all, Alan Armstrong and then Mick Heathcote. There's no going on about your bad luck. Just have to get on with things. That came 25 minutes into this game. And about to Argyle's best opportunity of scoring a goal so far this evening. And after about 20 minutes of non-stop stopport pressure, Plymouth for finally showing the visitors that they can play a bit of football as well. Back to Bruce Grobbler. Clearance is long. Billy takes time to react. Now he's trying to get on the end of this ball. Row bottom and then Collins. And again. 
Barlow just possessed by Charlery. And then Barlow, outstanding recovery, getting the ball off Gordon Cowens. Barlow going for goal. Neil Ullman's out wide right on his own. Has a little word with Barlow saying, why didn't you pass? But Barlow, perfectly entitled to go for goal after some wonderful recovery work. And this is turning into a bit of an entertaining last five or so minutes. And Plymouth have been largely responsible for that. A couple of long-range efforts from Billy and Barlow and that header from Heathcote. <laughs> Robola. It almost turns into a good ball, does it? Gannon didn't look too sure in the end. Just managed to find Paul Jones. Corazon almost scaring the life out of Paul Jones. Heathcote, Collins. This is Cavaco, and now Sean Connolly. Much easier to pronounce his name. Corazon. Almost earning possession for Argyle, but Cowan still in has the ball for Stockport. That's an outstanding ball out wide. Cooper. This is dangerous for Stockport County. And in the end, anywhere will do for Mark Patterson. I think we've lost another ball, have we? So a long, long throw in. Charlery in there, Grobola flaps. Billy with a brave header. Argo will be more than happy to get the ball away now. Still Stockport press. Great work there by Mark Saunders. And Argo will be relieved just to concede a corner, especially after that flat by Grobola. Could have gone anywhere. We're approaching the half hour mark. Williams away. Cooper. Lee Todd, first time cross. Robottom just eases the ball away, but Ilman won't get to that. Connolly. Tony Dinning. Stockport are well placed in the promotion race at the moment. Vital that they win this evening. They're currently five points behind the leaders, Berry, with two matches in hand. And it's their impressive away record of 27 points that's been their main attribute this season. That includes seven wins and six draws away from Edgley Park. A very good record. Heathcote and Charlery battling there. The referee saying nothing wrong. Robottom, very calm. Will Ilman get on the end of this? A combination of Ilman and Todd did. Billy, that's inspirational. Billy claiming and won the ball. That seemed a bit of a tough decision. The referee has been blowing up for any, even the mildest fouls it seems. Punishing Billy there. Charlery. Armstrong, Grobbler beaten is he? What an outstanding clearance there by Jason Robottom. I think the ball was going into the back of the net. It's another wonderful opportunity for Alan Armstrong. That was going in. And from just a couple of yards out, Jason Robottom managed to kick the ball over the bar. It's a stopport throw in. The corner rather wasted. Charlery. Tony Dinning. He's had a lot of joy on this right hand side so far, Cavaco. And again, he's past Williams. This is dangerous. Looked like it took a deflection off Robottom. Indeed, it did. It's another corner.
We played 32 minutes of this game. It's Plymouth nil, Stockport nil. And this is Stockport's fifth corner of the game. Pretty sure this is Kevin Cooper taking it. His teammates going for the ball. Heathcote's there first, though. Everyone's back for Argyle, including Illman. Cowens. Looks so assured on the ball, doesn't he? Cooper. Cooper trying to turn Billy. And Argyle under the cosh at the moment. Stockport's third corner in about two minutes. And Argyle's intentions are clear. They've put everyone back. This is just ridiculous. Just get on with it. Get the ball into the stands, eh? Finally, we, the corner's taken. And it might be to stop Port's benefit. In the end, Saunders was fouled. And lucky for Argyle, because that looked dangerous. So Bruce Grobbler, Jesse and back to Plymouth after international duty over the weekend. Barlow with a good header there. Williams. Williams. The cross is good. Jones drops it. The referee doesn't blow up for a free kick, so that would have counted. The challenge there by Simon Collins, letting his presence be known. Here's Rowbottom. Corazon, look at the determination on his face. Keeps the ball in play as well. Deserves the muted applause he gets there. Cowens. <laughs> Collins almost found a Neil Illman. Illman's looked quite lively today, replacing Adrian Littlechon. Corazon. Turns Connolly brilliantly. Collins is in there. So is Illman. Indeed, it is the Argyle number nine who gets his head onto that ball. But that was never going to trouble Paul Jones. Well, this time last season, Illman was getting valuable experience on loan at Cambridge United. And this season, too, has been a learning experience for the Argyle striker. Still a lot to learn, but his enthusiasm has won him a lot of admirers at home part this season. Armstrong trying to pick out Luke Cavaco. A firm challenge by Paul Williams, who's been outstanding all season. Mike Flynn, a record £150,000 signing from Preston. Another long throw in. Grobler again, not get nowhere near it. Billy this time saving Argyle's, the Argyle keeper's blushes. Flynn's now moved to the other side of the field to take it as another throw in. A lot of confidence in his ability because the centre back Jim Gannon's pushed forward. The header there was by an Argyle player, but he was fouled. Simon Collins. Would have been dangerous if the whistle hadn't been blown. Armstrong. Armstrong against Mark Patterson. Back, 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 back. 
Addison, first of all, beats Armstrong and then Cowens. Now Barlow, threading a ball there through to Collins. It's a nice ball out there to Ilman on that right-hand side. Here's Ilman. He crosses it in, but no one gets on the end of it. Barlow, too much pace. Barlow admits his error straight away, puts his hands up as well he might because Paul Williams was in a good position. Charlery and Heathcote enjoying a right old battle this evening. Ilman. Corazon. Corazon, can he find Ilman? He can, but Ilman's going to have to check. It's a goal kick. A lot of work there for Ilman to do and make anything of that. Armstrong finds Charlery. Well, Robottom was pretty confident of earning a throw, and that's why he left the ball, but in the end, the referee's assistant gives a decision against the Pilgrims. Well played, Robottom, showing a lot of strength there to beat Charlery. Barlow forward. Not the best of defensive clearances. Did the trick, though, because it's out of play. Saunders completely flaps. Will I go be punished? Armstrong's chasing, but excellent defensive work by Robotson, who's been outstanding since coming into the side. Patterson. The flag's up. This won't count. Armstrong is in a dangerous position. He got his head to that. There's the merest of flicks. It was dangerous. It was one-on-one -on -one there. Billy. My number six is Mark Patterson seems to have fully recovered from his terrible injury he sustained pre-season against Chelsea. With five minutes left before the half-time whistle blows. Not any real injuries that I can think of. Heathcote was down for a few seconds at the beginning of the game, but he recovered pretty quickly. Well, Barlow's a bit of a firm challenge. Barlow surprised Mick Jones late with his lot of strength he's shown and not giving up at 50-50 balls, showing what a tough player he is for such a small fellow as well. Well, the decision in the end will go in Stockport's favour. Cavaco. The run there being made by Armstrong. First time cross here by Connolly. It's a good cross. And Gobola. But once a short in goal. Well, Corazon can chase for as well, but... Always going to go to Paul Jones there. Charlie with the flick. Vital that Robottom got there. It hits Mick Heathcote full on the face. Heathcote's taking a right old battering this evening. And the referee, because it's a head injury, has to stop playing and allow Norman Medhurst onto the pitch. Two 
Argyle have lost their last three home league matches against Stockport after being unbeaten in the previous four meetings. The full record is three wins each and one draw. And it makes a nice change to have no Kevin Francis in the Stockport side. It seems every time he comes to home park, he scores a hat trick or something like that. And Paul Williams in your picture there, of course, is a former Stockport man. Remember him setting up a few Stockport goals at home park. Went on to play for Coventry City. Played many games in the Premiership before I got snapped him up. The summer before last for £50,000 and what an outstanding player he's been for Argyle ever since. Been an ever present in the Argyle side this year. The only Argyle player in the side to have that feat. And I'm sure Stockport fans watching will have happy memories of the Argyle number three there, Paul Williams. Heathcote gets up. I'm sure he'll be all right. Looks a bit stunned, but a little more. In the past few years, of course, Stockport have been always there or thereabouts, but yet just failing to make the first division. Missed out on the playoffs more than once. They of course, made the playoff final back in 1994, and they would have played at Argyle if Argyle hadn't have lost to Burnley in the final at Wembley. The less said about that Burnley game, the better. One of the most disappointing games in Argyle's recent history, of course. Here he goes, I'm glad to say, not surprisingly, it should be added is up. And it looks like we're going to have a drop ball situation. 44 minutes into this first half. It's Plymouth nil, Stockport nil. It's been entertaining in patches, though. And we certainly could have had one or two goals this evening. Robottom's going to have to deal with this. In the end, Charlery gets the ball first. The first time for us, and he finds Billy. Billy. The ball out of defence. <laughs> Collins is through. Collins only has Corazon for support. And in the end, it's into the very safe hands of Paul Jones. Not the best of balls from Collins. But the long clearance from Billy deceived the Stockport defence, and Collins was through. And for a moment, it looked like. That could have been a real opportunity for Argyle to score the first goal of the evening. <laughs> Corazon brings the ball down. That's a check. Still Corazon. Corazon desperately needs support. And the end, Patterson's there for him. Patterson. His pass intercepted by Connolly. Ilman gets a second pass. Almost an outstanding word there by Ilman, but here's Barlow. Billy. But once the flag isn't raised, it looks like there's going to be too much pace on the ball. So summing up, just as the half-time whistle's about to blow, Stockport will probably feel they've had the better of play. Alan Armstrong in particular has had a couple of golden opportunities. One header hit the woodwork when it looked for all the world that it was a goal. And his second opportunity was cleared off the line by Robottom. Whilst at the other end, Mick Hiko looked like he'd scored after 25 minutes. Yet his header was again somehow cleared off the line. And all I got for the efforts was a throw in. There's still a chance of a goal just before half time. Tackle from behind Carlo Corazon, and it's no surprise that the referee is going to produce the first booking of the evening. Carlo Corazon, the offender. Calico fell to the ground in pretty dramatic fashion. And the yellow cards are produced. So a minute and a half into stoppage time now. Connolly takes the free kick. Heathcote, only half away. Cooper. Just possessed by Saunders there. Now Billy. 
Well, the flag is up. That is close. Neil Elman had judged to be offside, but you have to say the reaction of the fans says it all. And a very tight decision. Wouldn't like to be in the referee's assistant shoes there. And on that note, it's half time. Plymouth nil, Stockport nil. But there really should have been at least three goals already in this game. There's been one booking for Carlo Corazon. Armstrong has had Stockport's best chances. He's going to have Phillips. Collins was also put through, but his shot was well saved by Paul Jones. As the players go off at half time, it's Plymouth by Guyon nil, Stockport nil. But it all bodes well for an entertaining second half. was of course the Coca-Cola Cup final only two days ago on Sunday when Middlesbrough took on Leicester and I just wonder if those Stockport fans are wondering if it could have been them playing at Wembley and not Middlesbrough they put up such a brave performance especially up at the Riverside Stadium and just one goal came between them and a place at Wembley Stadium but it's a remarkable run nevertheless got a lot of coverage on national television Games against West Ham and Southampton are live on Sky and the game against Middlesbrough was live on terrestrial television. <laughs> Early break here for Stockport now. Paul Williams trying his best. And that came off the crossbar, did it? I think Bruce Gobelard got a punch onto it. Just half a minute into the second half, stop ball again threatening. So this is County seventh corner of the game. Flicked on Heathcote, trying to get it away. This is only as far as Gordon Cowan's. Williams using, or was it Billy rather, clearing the ball, it's a throw into Stockport now, but danger for Argyle in these opening stages. Again the long throw in. And that was Jim Gannon with a final touch. Sign from Sheffield United, Jim Gannon, £70,000 in March 1990. I was just working out at half-time then, out of Arcos, 20 games at home part of the season in the league. They failed to score in 10 of them. Really isn't good enough. On, Can they put that record straight now? Ilman with a cross, but it's not going to cause Stockport any problems whatsoever. Paul Jones didn't really have a lot to do in the first half. Here's that save from Simon Collins to make, plus a scare from Mick Heathcote, but apart from that, apart from a few crosses, little else to do. Outstanding turn by the number seven, Cavaco. Trying to thread a ball through to Charleroi, but it really was disappointing. Cavaco, very angry with himself for not producing a better ball after such a good run as well. Stockport, just like they did in the first half, starting off the better.
Rowbottom. Billy. Algarve passing the ball around very nicely indeed. That's a bit too nicely. Best just to get the ball into the other half. Well, finally, a nice run. Is it broken down? No, the flag stays down. The ball's still in play. Here's Ilman. Barlow. Billy's made a good run, but not found. Instead, it's Saunders. Corazon. Billy, first time cross. It's looking good. And in the end, Connolly happy to head it away to safety. It's a corner to Argyle. Martin Barlow again will take this corner kick. Heathcote's in there trying to get on his head onto the ball. The corner's good. Jones can only punch it away. Will Barlow get another opportunity to cross the ball in? No, he won't. Instead, stop ball will break thanks to Armstrong. Robotson does well. But that really was a dis disappointing decision. Corazon, he was offside. That's what the flag was raised for, but he wasn't interfering with play, he was running the other way, and should have let play continue, disappointing decision there, in fact it was just the wrong decision, shouldn't have been made, a late challenge there on Chris Billy, off the ball, Tony Denning recognising he made a poor challenge, and Billy stays down, is it right now? But Dinning with a late challenge and rightly getting booked. Signed on a free transfer in 1994 from Newcastle United, Tony Dinning. Becoming the first top four player of the evening to be booked. Argyle fans still fuming at that offside decision. And here's Billy. Billy's going to have to work hard to get a cross in. In the end, finds Barlow. Barlow really does need to cross it in. What's he doing? Finally in by Billy. It's looking good. Come on, Argo! Corazon keeps the pressure on by deflecting that clearance. Patterson. Saunders brings the ball down. And Saunders, that's a good challenge. Argyle showing they're committed to the cause. So much to fight for. It would be disastrous if the Argyle were to get relegated. Heathcote. Todd cuts out the ball. Armstrong. Trying to find Charlery, but Gravelo will get there first. Lee Todd won that ball. And the former Hartley Paul man gives the ball away again. It's another throw in. Billy. Barlow in some space. Is he going to go for goal? He's taking his time. Now Ilman takes over and Argyle having to start all over again. Billy and Corazon fighting for the one ball. It's an excellent cross by Corazon. Across the face of that goal. And in the end, Calico concedes a throw in. And Saunders will take it. Throw-ins, searching for Collins, cleared by Dinning. And now in possession of the ball, Stockport. Here's Lee Todd. For Jim Gannon with the most talked about clearance of the evening. And Argyle hoping now to punish him. That came off Saunders. And it's a goal kick to Stockport County.
hard to believe that after today there's only two more home games in the league before the season comes to an end. It seems like only yesterday Argo were kicking off the season back in August against York. A lot's happened since then. Barlow pressured into making that pass back to Jason Robotham. Robotham, the long ball. Flicked on by Corazon. Ilman going for the spectacular. In the end, the only thing that was spectacular was the way he missed the ball. Gannon. That went behind, it's a goal kick. <laughs> Let me just remind you about the substitutes this evening. I got up Ronnie Morger, midfielder. Adrian, this is John. Um, I got top goal scorer of eight goals. And of course, Tony James, who's just re returning from both a suspension and an injury. While Stockport have Andy Much, Damon Soul, and Kieran Durkin to call upon should they need, need a rise. <laughs> Corazon, won quite a few headers this evening. He's done well. Barlow brings the ball down nicely. Fails to find Ilman, instead Connolly can clean up at the back. Jones, that's turned into almost a good pass to Cavaco. Robotham, Williams. Argyle earning applause for this work in defence. Ilman now. Still Ilman. It's an outstanding run being made by Williams, but still Argyle push. The cross by Collins. Oh, and Billy and Corazon got in each other's way again. And whilst those two have a quick disagreement, Corazon telling Billy to shout for the ball. But it was a promising attack, ruined by some confusion. Corlins will have to do well to chase this. Barlow. And the offside flag is up again. Patterson missed that one. And Robottom with a very calm header back to his keeper. It's well like that. That makes you realise why Tony James can't get into the side at the moment. And James is being touted as one of the favourites for player of the year as well. Well, Williams. Has to concede a throw in. In all my time watching Argyle, I can't remember a season like this where there's been so few goals at home park. Charlery there. Perhaps we we're going to have a goal there. Charlery got a flick on, but Robolo was aware and got down well. and keep this in play, yes he can. Well, Patterson gets a 1-2 off Kevin Cooper. And Ilman just missing out on getting the ball there. Good defensive work by Jim Gannon. Well, Grobler's going to come out here and it proves to be the right decision. Ilman now. He's got Lee Todd for company and Lee Todd does his job well. Grobler came out to deny Cavaco and his clearance turned into an outstanding pass to Neil Ilman, almost producing a shot and goal. 
comparison. Well, the linesman didn't give the free kick. The referee, in the end, was fed up of waiting for the flag to be raised, so he gave the decision himself. And you have to say, poor old Corazon was having a shirt tucked left, right, and centre. Well, Neil Ilman can get a lot of swerve on these set piece moves. It's another good free kick. Well, Patterson was involved there, but it came off the Stockport defender last. And this is Argyle's fifth corner of the game. Approaching the 14th minute of the second half. It's Plymouth nil, Stockport nil. Well, there's nobody on the end to get on the end of that clearance. And now Cavaco showing a lot of pace against Williams. Still Cavaco. <coughs> Can Williams get in there? In the end, he does his work well. But Grobbler can't prevent the ball from going out of play. And just as Argyle had a corner moments ago, stop put, follow suit. So with half an hour left, plenty of time for someone to get a goal. As Brian Clough once famously said, it only takes a second to get a goal. And Stockport now hoping to do just that. A clearance there, quite simple in the end for Paul Williams. This is Stockport's ninth corner of the game. Billy. Corazon using his strength to turn. Well, he had very little support, only Collins. Todd back to his keeper Jones. Jones takes his time and produces a good clearance there. Cowens. Charlery now. Well, a few numbers here on this right hand side for Stockport. One of them's Sean Connolly. I'm very proud of myself not calling Stockport's number two Sean Connery all evening. I'm sure I'll have a slip of the tongue sometime before now and half past nine. But even the irrepressible James Bond would find it very hard to produce a miracle at the moment. A goal not looking very likely at the very moment. Certainly no dramatic incidents like there were in the first half. Robles clearance, luckily for him, finds Barlow. That's what you call a hit and hope ball. Todd. Barlow takes over from Elman's good work. Barlow with Corazon to his right. For now, Barlow going alone. Now, Elman. Corazon. Through the legs there of Flynn. But Flynn recovers well enough to concede a throw in. Heathcote pushing forward into the penalty area. But Argyll, first of all, have to produce a cross. Ilman. Ilman going for goal, but a very weak effort. Never going to trouble Paul Jones in a million years. Paul Jones in goal began his career in non league. First of all, with Bridge North and then Kidderminster Harriers. The four wolves snapped him up. Well, it wasn't the best of goal kicks, but Stockport survived. Row bottom. 
I mean, like a pinball machine at the present, just giving the ball a good thump every time he gets it. That, if that went behind, it would have been Scott Port's corner. But Argyle do well to get the ball to Corazon. Neil Ilman now. This is a real chance for Argyle. Ilman with Saunders for support. Ilman shots blocked though. Again, it's Mike Flynn with some outstanding defensive work. Ilman didn't have the pace to produce a shot on goal. Mark Saunders was desperately trying to keep up with him. To give support, but in the end, Stockport survived. Barlow. And it looks like we're about to have a change. And it's an Argyle substitution, it looks like. Not just yet. I think we're still waiting for the substitute to strip off. I think it's Little John who might come on any minute for Neil Ilman. We'll have to wait and see to see if that's true. Collins. Williams has made an outstanding Brian and Connolly with a vital, vital interception. Williams often bursts from defence to produce an extra man up front. He wasn't picked out that time. Into the 20th minute of the second half, it's a throw-in which Saunders takes. Two men between them clear it for Stockport. Heathcote back into the danger zone. Collins. And in the end, completely unchallenged was Lee Todd. Why on earth didn't Argyle at least put him under pressure? Jones' clearance is only far, as far as Barlow. Collins. Collins, it's a deep cross. Billy's in there trying to cause trouble, but he concedes a free kick in the process. And now Adrian and John is about to come on. Neil Ullman has worked tirelessly, is about to come off. And Adrian Littletron. With eight goals this season, is the top goal scorer now. Mickey Evans has departed. But it's amazing, the statistic that says that Adrian Littleton hasn't scored a league goal at home park in 12 months. Not since Scarborough came to home park. Last season in the third division, has Adrian Littleton scored in the league at home park. She was more than overdue a goal. And is today going to be the opportunity? But for now, it's Stockport pushing. The shot there by Cooper. Who scored in a victory over Crew recently, but he didn't score there. In the end, it was way over. Well, Little John has to score sooner or later. The law of averages are working overtime. Mick Jones has showed a lot of faith in Little John. Perhaps it's about time Little John rewarded that faith with a goal. Taught in some trouble. Collins fails to find Corazon. Patterson brought to the floor, free kick. Billy. Jones in trouble, but in the end the keeper does well. Billy with some nice play. Plays the ball, but it's a stop ball throw. And Lee told in his sixth season at the club. I wonder how many throw ins he's taken in his time. Takes yet another one there. Flicks on by Armstrong. Charlie in the action, but it goes as far as Grobola. Todd again. He's going to take yet another throw in.
The club captain here is Mike Flynn. Cowan's prevented from taking that quickly by Barlow. And yeah, I think the ball wasn't taken on the right spot anyhow. Gannon, the flick on there. I am strong. Corazon with a brave header. Little John with his first touch. Can see to throw a free kick at the, in the process. I see Ronnie Morge limbering up. I wonder if he might be brought on any moment now. Barlow. Little John. Collins desperately trying to return the pass there. Failed to do so. Now it's Armstrong. Williams. Adrian Little John has a chance to run at the defence. It's a good run by the former Sheffield United man. The cross is good. Can Corazon get on the end of it? Superb control by Argyle's number seven. And he almost finds Barlow. Desperately unlucky. And Argyle will be even more unlucky if Todd can break to good effect. What good play there by Robotten to stop Todd in his tracks. And now Argyle can break. Williams. The game now livening up a bit. Little John. And that goes the right side of the corner flag. It's a corner kick. We're in the 26th minute, Martin Barlow has so many bodies to aim at. Collins is in there, Saunders, Littletron, Heathcote and Patterson. And but Jones is handling not for the first time is superb. You'd, I think Argo would realise by now that perhaps they should move it a bit further away from the goalkeeper. Because they're not getting much luck at the moment. Collins. Spectacular overhead kick. Played by Jim Gannon. Billy. I got will get a second chance to cross it in. Saunders. Barlow. Billy, he's got Corazon to his right if need be. Billy goes alone. It's another cross which was easily dealt with by the defence. Appeals for handball, the referee quietly pointing out that they hit Bartlett's shoulder. And now it's Williams. Williams with a run. And in the end it fickles out to Paul Jones. Last time Stockport came to home part, they came away with a 2-0 victory, which saw the resignation of Steve McCall just a few days later. That was the season Argyle got relegated, and it would be disastrous if Argyle were to get relegated again this season, wouldn't it? Here's Barlow up. Could have gone anywhere. Barlow very calm. Cowens. But Robotten's been outstanding and alive to things all, e all evening. And that was no different there. Corazon. Corazon in the end, runs into a cul-de-sac. 
row butter. Come on, Chris! Come on, Simon! Gannon, back to his keeper. Little John can put Jones under pressure, but Jones is as calm as they come. Sean Connolly. In his fifth season at the club, the number two there. Throw into Stockport. Williams furious with the decision. But like a true professional soon gets on with things. Can't play by the Argyle defenders here. But for now, that Linda stand has taken us right all battering. The linesman's flagging. And then he puts his flag down again. I think Stopper want to make a substitution, but they'll have to wait a few moments. Heathcote heads it away for a corner. I think that's a bat flying over Home Park at the moment. It's a matter of interest. Stopper are now into double figures when it comes to corners. This is the attempt for the game. Well, the referee's blown up for something. And now Stockport, I think, will make that change. Looks like a... Get off, you children, it's going to be Lewis Cavaco, who's made one or two bursting runs from defence throughout the evening. It's a sporting round of applause from the Argyle fans. And Kieran Durkin... Signed from Wrexham last year for £70,000. Durkin has about 14 minutes left to impress. Ray Bottom yet again, calm and assured. Robola, hurried, wants to get on with things. Collins with a flick on. Corazon. Onside, Adrian Littlejohn. He has to drill it in as best as he can. And now Armstrong. And the end goes for goal. That wasn't a very good, good choice, especially when there's a player out wide completely unmarked. Corazon now. A lot of work for Little John to do there. And now it's Mike Patterson. Patterson again. Barlow. Well, he gets the rub of the green here. Still Barlow. An inspirational runner to the penalty area. In the end, it came off Kevin Cooper. And our goal in their seventh corner of the game. Well, he had a bit of luck there, Barlow, but it was a superb run nevertheless. And now Barlow has to recover to take this corner kick. The corner, it came off Saunders. But nobody on the end there to get on the flick on. Little John. Little John goes for goal. Straight into the hands of Paul Jones. Well, that's more like it from Little John. It's so strange that he's not hitting the back of the net at the moment. But Little John, showing the confidence of a true striker going for goal. And in the end, it was safe handling by Paul Jones. Cooper had rather a quiet second half. But Cooper's in the action at the moment. Flynn. 
Williams and Durkin in battle. And Williams, but such a little man, so he's just strength against his old club. Well, now all his personal problems are over. Ronnie Morche can get on with things that matter on the football field. Simon Collins is about to come off. And Ronnie Morche, with five goals this season from midfield, comes on to a deserved round of applause. One of our girls, two heroes. And Morgé's first task is to go up for this ball. Some nice play there by the Argyle substitute. Here's Billy. Billy's cross. Can Little John get on the end of it? Jones was in no man's land. And Little John with the header. Over the crossbar. It's perhaps the nearest Argyle have come in the whole of the second half to a goal. Just some superb play by Percival Morgé and then Billy with a great cross. That was almost a goal. Todd. But number six here is Jim Gannon. Charlery and Durkin between them having a nice move. Durkin, the first time cross. Straight to Bruce Gobbler. Gobbler immediately plays it out to Chris Billy. Barlow, that midfield is completely sparse at the moment, very rare. Williams. Morgé's playing an emergency striker at the moment. Little John, he's looked quite lively since coming on. The cross is good. And Jones prevents Morgé from getting a header into an empty back net, net there. Superb play by Little John, great cross. But it was only into the hands of Paul Jones. With nine minutes left, Plymouth nil, Stockport nil, but my, we've come close a few times in this game. Robottom, he's one of the main contenders for man of the match. Morge. Corazon's unmarked on that right-hand side. Corazon, with only Morge for support. I go lacking numbers in the penalty area, which is a bit sad to see. But for now, it's Billy. Perhaps it won't matter. It's a brilliant cross. And what a time of clearance, Morshe! He didn't get a connection onto the ball that he would have liked. And in the end, a simple save for Jones, but that was close. How on earth it came into the penalty area for Morshe in the first place, I don't know. But Morshe came so close to getting a sixth goal of the season. And as we approach the end of this game, it's Argyle looking the most dangerous. Morshe with a flick. Flynn with a header. Morshe's added a bit of spark into that Argyle attack. Robola to Patterson. Billy. Argyle really need to get it into the Stockport half, which they do now. Little John. Williams now, I thought the referee was going to blow up, but he doesn't, and I wish he had now, because Williams' shot was pretty poor. We have to say, this second half performance, especially of late, has been rather encouraging, and causing Stockport one or two problems. Meanwhile, there's a change now for Stockport. And Alan Armstrong, who's had two outstanding chances in the first half, how on earth he didn't get a name on the score sheet, I'll never know. He comes off. And Andy Much, signed last season after a trial with the reserves. Such an experienced campaigner, Liverpool born. Best known for his spell at Wolves, of course. He comes onto the field to play for the last five minutes. Morge, he finds Carlo Corazon. But Corazon's first touch isn't good enough. 
and another chance goes begging. Corazon really should have done better there. That's been put through by Ronnie Morge, who's been outstanding since coming on a sub. Billy. Well, Jones was concerned enough to track back. And now the referee wants a word with, I think, Mark Patterson. Andy Much may be having a word in the ear, but all's forgotten now. Well, it's still time for a goal, five minutes. You have to say, Morgé has been an inspiration since coming on. He's not even a striker yet. He's and a lot of good for the Argyle cause. Little John. Billy now. Morget making a good run there. Come on, Jess. Come on, Jess. And now Little John. Come on, Adrian. Little John, go for goal. Take a deflection. It's Argyle's seventh corner now. Eighth corner, rather. We've had so many corners in this game. That one of them's got to produce a goal sometimes, surely. Perhaps now this is going to be this. The one that does it. Little John will take the corner. Everyone but the keeper and Williams and Robottom in or thereabouts the penalty area. The corner again, straight into the hands of Jones. It's frustrating. But a regular occurrence. Four minutes left. And Argyle are getting better and better in the second half. But even so, some of the fans starting to go home, they feel that they've seen enough. Sean Connolly. His shot takes a deflection off Barlow. Heathcote only as far as Connolly again, but Connolly slips just, look when he, just when it looked like he was about to score. Lucky let off there for Argar. Heathcote, towering header. Well, Argyle doing their very best to give Stockport another bite of the cherry. But here's Billy. He finally does get it away. Morshay's making an outstanding run, not picked out. And Billy's ball doesn't find Corazon either. That was disappointing. Here's Grobola. He just got his hands to it. There's a threat there of Grobola wandering out of the penalty area. Corazon has worked so hard with very little reward. Billy. First touch lets him down. Heathcote. Good flat pass. Robola's clearance wasn't so good. Heathcote wants to give him another chance. And this time Grobola takes it. And Grobola, to the delight of the crowd, raises his hand in delight. It's Durkin. Connolly. Little John keeps the ball in play. One for Morgé to chase. Argyle's free kick, free kick, much fouling Patterson. It's been a very clean game, only two Vikings in the entire game. One for Corazon, one for Dinning. Robottom with a free kick. Corazon, 
finds no one in particular and Stockport will be disappointed to concede a throw in. Didn't really need to. About a minute left before stoppage time. Billy, is there going to be a dramatic end to this game? I thought Heathcote might get on the end of it, but Jones again, impeccable when it comes to handling it. Heathcote must have had a shout from Gobbler. Nil-nil won't really please either side. Plymouth Argyle need the points to steer clear of relegation, or Stockport need the points to try and earn an automatic promotion. In fairness, both sides have gone for the win. Stockport, even at the death, is still trying to find that last last goal. Cooper, Cowens. This is worrying for Plymouth. Durkin to the other substitute, Andy Mudge. Patterson slips, gets up and does well. Barlow now. Corazon chests it down beautifully to Adrian Ellerjohn. Morshe to his right. Morshe still might get in there, but Lee Todd did outstandingly well to cut out the pass. We're in injury time now. Referee takes a look at his watch and indeed does blow up for full time. Well, Argyle fans will be disappointed that their side didn't win, but I'll be pleased that Argyle put up a good show against one of the second division's best sides. Stockport came to home heart with a good reputation and indeed impressed. In the first half, Alan Armstrong had a couple of op unbelievable opportunities to put aside a head, but luck wasn't on his side. In the second half, Adrian Nusseldron went close, whilst Morgé made uh, an impression after coming on as substitute. We hope Plymouth Argyle can steer clear of that relegation trouble whilst good luck to Stockport County. They've done the soccer the division proud and one hopes that they can get promoted for all the efforts they put in this season. So as the sides go off to deserved round of applause, my name is Richard Hoskin, it's been a clue of Argyle nil, Scottport nil, but it's been an entertaining game nevertheless.